Bosata. So we are in the Bosata. So we just release it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bosata. We thank you, God. We thank you for the angels. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. So can we just stand and get, get ready to bless the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. I believe we're just going to go ahead and go right into it. I know we have teaching this morning. So how many of y'all came expecting? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen.
Father God, your name is matchless. It's wonderful. It's powerful. It's miraculous, Lord, and we praise you. Hallelujah.
miracle can happen now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord is here. A miracle can happen now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord is Spirit of the Lord is here. 
Spirit of God, fall fresh on us. We need your presence. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Here as in heaven, Spirit of God, fall fresh on us. We need your presence. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Here as
mighty name of Jesus. And so, Father, even on the sound of my voice, Father, I just thank you even now for this anointing, Father God, this yes. present to teach, yes. this anointing, Father, that's present to heal bodies, to work miracles, Father, because when you show up, anything is possible. And we thank you, Father, even now. And Father, I just decree and I declare this place and those watching, Father God, that bodies will be healed today, yes. Father God, that eyes will be open to see, that yes. ears will be open to hear, Father, that, that even... Father God, in areas where there needs to be a spirit of repentance in the area of the prophetic, Father God, that you would do that, that you would cause us, Holy yes. Spirit, to see any error, that you would cause us, Holy Spirit, to see some things that we have never seen before. And I thank you, Father, for the spirit of revelation being released in this place right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I decree and declare veils are going to be lifted this morning in the name of Jesus. That even now, veils are lifting right now. We need to see you, Jesus. We need to see you. We need to hear your heartbeat. We need to understand who you are. And we just thank you even now, Father, that you're doing that. Even now, Father, there's just a, a, a fear of God that's coming back into your church, Father. We thank you, Father. Father, your gifts are holy. Your gifts are holy, Father. And Father, we just we just ask that you would just forgive us, Father God, for misusing, mishandling your gifts, Father, even ahead of time right now. For misusing and mishandling people's lives, Father. I thank you, Father. I thank you for your fire that's in this place, Father. I thank you. I thank you, Father. I just ask that you would speak a word to these lips of plain and day, Father, that the anointing to teach would come. Yes. That there would be a clarity and an accuracy. Father God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, just work to these lips of plain today. And I just give you permission. I yield to you, Holy Spirit. I thank you. I thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Amen. That is so good. He is so good to us. So if you have your, if you have notebooks, you need to, um, we're going to record it, but I always encourage people to take notes when we teach. Today, is, for me, is teaching. So I'm a little intimidated teaching in front of the preacher and prophet out there, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Both of them. <laughs> and whoever else. But you know how many know that, don't you love the diversity of the administration of God? I do. How boring would life be if we were all the same? And so God uses his vessels. But today, I am going to uh, teach a little bit uh, on the prophetic. I'm going to also, I don't even know how it's going to come out. I've got some uh, notes here. We're going to walk through some scripture and some things and, and ask Holy Spirit just to just to really do whatever he wants to do today. And tonight we'll be back again at 7 o'clock for more uh, demonstration and, and preaching and power and miracles. Bless Jesus and all those things. But um, I want to uh, teach a little bit on the prophetic. In 1 Corinthians 13, 9 says, We know in part and we prophesy in part. You hear the word part, right? Yeah. We know in part and we prophesy in part. It says, when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away with. And so as I'm, as I'm up here and I'm releasing things concerning the prophetic, which has come from things I have been taught, things I have learned myself, um, things revealed by the Lord, you know, all of those things. But it's still in part. All right? So I want you to get that. It's still in part. We're forever going to be continuing to get revelation in the prophetic. Amen? We're going to. Because Jesus is the revelator. Do you know everything about Jesus right now? I know you don't. Okay? And so what I'm saying is that even as I'm teaching, it's from the Word, and it's, some will be out of experience, but I'm not up here to say I know everything. Okay? And so, bless the Lord. So, let's, let's Revelation 19.10, and some of these scriptures you might have heard of uh, Mark releasing last night. I don't know. You know, some of them. We're going to, even as this 
continues, the teaching continues to go out and the preaching and all of those things, you know, things will overlap because there are things that the Father wants you to get. There are things that we need to, to get in our spirit and get understanding and get revelation on. Because sometimes we talked about the sound of familiarity. And so familiarity, when the sound comes out, sometimes we, we, we miss the message because we're so used to the sound. And so we need the sound to come out in different ways. And we need it to get it. However God wants us to get it this weekend, we're going to do it. And so Revelation 19.10, we heard it last night, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, right? Yes. Well, the word testimony there in the Greek means the evidence of Jesus. It means the witness of Jesus. It means the record of Jesus. <laughs> so you can say the testimony or the evidence of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You could say the witness of Jesus, the record of Jesus, is the spirit of prophecy. And so, thank God, we know that in Acts 2.17, when um, Peter recorded or he um, referenced Joel, he said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. <laughs> and so today I want to talk about the different ways in which the prophetic comes forth through us. And so we have Jesus within us. You heard Mark say it. We are filled with Christ. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. Yes. And so our sons and daughters, we are sons and daughters. We have the ability to prophesy. And so last night, Mark talked about the picture of a prophet, the office of a prophet. And we'll, I'll touch on that a little bit. But there's also the gift of prophecy and the spirit of prophecy, I believe. Last Sunday, the spirit of prophecy hit the house. And there were several people that had never released the word or had never uh, prophesied anything. And they came forward because the spirit of prophecy was moving. And they came forward and they had a word in their belly uh, that the Lord had given them to release. And some of these words were just two or three little lines or maybe a one word. But nonetheless, the fire and the presence... The testimony of Jesus was on it. And it did some things. And so in the church, I feel like we've made this thing too hard. We've made the gospel too hard. It's supposed to be simple. It's supposed to be, you know, so a child can get it. Our children can prophesy. We've seen them do that. They can get spiritual dreams and revelations. Pay attention when they're telling you, uh, Mama, Daddy, I had a dream. Well, let's sit down and talk about it, okay? Because God is speaking today like never before uh, through his servants and even those that are young, those that are babes. And so Hebrews 1, let's go to the book of Hebrews here. We're going to walk scripture today. So God is, God is uh, going to reveal some things. Hebrews 1, it says, God, after he spoke along, to the fathers and the prophets in many portions and in many ways. In verse 2, in these last days has spoken to us in his son, who he appointed heir of all things. Through him also he made the world. He is the radiance of his glory, the exact representation of his nature, and upholds all things by the word of his power. When he had made purification of his sins, he sat down at the right hand of majesty on high. So here you see... You know, I'm still referencing really Revelation 19.10 about the witness, the testimony, the evidence, and the record of Jesus concerning prophecy. So God manifested himself in Christ. He released him. Uh, Jesus was heaven's thoughts. Praise the Lord. Did you love that? Jesus was heaven's words to us. He is the word. Jesus was heaven's pattern and plan for us. Isn't that exciting? Yeah, all in Christ. So we need to relax a little bit here. You know, and even, even when we say God is stirring up the gift in you, people get all afraid sometimes. Afraid to step out. Afraid to release what they feel God is saying. Fear of being punished. Jesus walked with those 12, and he worked with them, and he discipled them, and he groomed them, and they messed up many times, but he never left them, did he? He 
continue to exhort them. We continue to say, come on, come on, let's do this. Let's keep this. Let's come on, let's come on, let's do it. And he still does that with us today. And so the veil was rent. We can go in and we can develop our spiritual gifts. We can cultivate or train our ear to hear God. Amen? We can do that. Now, each of us is different in this place, and so there are certain ways that God talks to his children, you know, and he may not talk to that other child that way. It doesn't change his nature. It doesn't change his character. There's things about God that are absolute. I have six children, as you all know, and I talk to each one of them differently many times. There's ways I can come to my oldest son that there's a way I need to come to him sometimes. And the other, the other son, maybe a different one, I can't just come to him like that, or vice versa. I'm, I'm their mother, and I understand them. Okay, God is our Father. He knows what he's put inside of you. He's created and fashioned you. And, it's, and Jesus said that my sheep hear my voice. And the strangers, they will not follow Right? Yeah. And so we're gonna we're gonna get something here prophetically that God understands you. Alright? And he knows how to speak to you so you can hear what he's saying. So relax. Alright? Thank God this house is a place of training and discipleship and equipping. So, you know, I would rather you do something as nothing. I would rather you step out in faith and believe God because the faith pleases God. <laughs> and I'm going to say it, and I could be rebuked for it, but I believe God would rather see us step out in faith and miss it than do nothing. That's my opinion right there. Because at least we're doing something. At least we desire, we're seeking, we're asking, we're knocking. We're doing something. Right? We're not, we're not taking our talent and digging a hole and sticking it in the dirt because we're afraid of punishment. My father is not a punisher. He disciplines me. He chastens me. But he's not going to punish me or destroy me. Thank God. Because of the blood. Amen. The blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So after this weekend, guess what? You're going to begin to step out in some things. Not just releasing words. That's going to be important. But even in the marketplace. Hear me saying it that I yes. can't be on your job. I'm not called to your assignment. I'm not, you know what else? I'm not called to release the prophetic word that's in your belly. Call. Oh. oh, let's just put it all on the leaders. Let the people in the pulpit preach and let the people no, know. You're accountable for what you know. Amen. So what you hear this weekend, you're accountable to activate it. You cannot stand before the Father and say, I was afraid. When the Father says, the voice that I released to you said, do not fear me, that I'm not a punisher. You heard me say it. Well, I didn't hear you say it. I said it through the messenger. Hello. <laughs> Remember, don't get familiar with the sound. In Jesus' name. So we're going we're gonna to understand some things. I want to talk about the seer. Because God speaks to us in different ways prophetically. Okay? Now, the prophetic voice is that of revelation and illumination. So even as uh, Mark was prophesying, we were being illuminated, right? We do prophetic teams, so when you're releasing a word, there's an illumination. There is a revelation of Jesus coming forth. The sound of God is coming forth, and it will reveal the mind of Christ in your life. That's what it should reveal. It should reveal the mind of Jesus concerning you. I love that, you know, uh, Pastor was getting ministered to yesterday. I was being illuminated yet again. Even though the word was for her, she was getting it. Because the prophetic has, has such a power packed behind it. It's the river of God. Okay, it's not a pond. It's not a stagnant lake. The prophetic has streams, right? It's a stream. It's a river flowing from the throne of God into your cracked, dry places. 
into places maybe of sorrow or depression or bondage. I'm telling you, uh, Psalm 24 talks about the voice of the Lord. You can read that sometimes. How it breaks things. It shatters things. It creates things. It bursts things. Amen? It's exciting, isn't it? And guess what? That power is inside of you today because you have Christ in you. And so prophecy is this... Um, Prophecy is a supernatural utterance in a known, um, it's a supernatural utterance in a known tongue. And so if I was going to go to the seer, all seers, I believe, are prophets. I believe that all prophets are intercessors. Okay? I believe that uh, the mantle of a prophet, you, get a, you have the burden of the Lord. <laughs> The mantle of the prophet is not something uh, you want to take on because you, you can't, it's a calling anyway. It's called by God, but many people try and wear something that God never intended them to wear. And so just because you have a strong gift in the prophetic doesn't mean God called you or mandated you as a prophet. And so I'm with Mark. I believe there's not as many as they think there are personally. I just don't believe it. I believe that uh, there wasn't that, if you read the word, there wasn't a whole lot in there. Right? But they made huge differences. And they were full of power. And they were full of the what? The burden of the Lord and the message of Christ. The message of Jesus is on their lips. And so, the Hebrew word for prophecy means to flow forth, to bubble up like a fountain. It means to drop off, to lift up, to tumble forth, and to spring forth. I, I, and I know Mark has visions, uh, but he's, he's a, a, I probably won't say it right, Kenneth can help me, a Nabi, where it just bubbles up out of him. I mean, I've never seen anything like that, where he's just preaching or teaching or talking, and all of a sudden, boom, there it is. He does that when we talk on the phone sometimes. We're just having a good conversation. Next thing you know, I'm getting the word of the Lord. Because it's bubbled up out of him. And some of you shaking your head because you get it. What is that? That is to the word just comes forth. It gushes up out. And man, when it comes out, it's it's from the throne of God. It's like an interruption. <laughs> it erupts and it interrupts your life. Yeah. Okay, no. yeah. Thank you. The volcano. I've been dreaming about those kind of things. I'm a little nervous about it. Because <laughs> I'm like, oh, Lord. But it didn't consume us, okay? I just had another volcano dream. I was sharing with them. And I saw the lava <laughs> and the steam. I was like trying to get people to safety. And so my mind, Jeanette's mind, tends to gravitate to the, uh, to the I'm not going to say negative because I do not have a negative mind. But I'm, I'm always conscious of judgment of God, just the fear of God, and, you know, but, but I know that's not what God is leading in that. And so anyway, pay attention to what God is speaking to you. So the Greek word for prophesy means to speak for another. It means to speak for God, to be his spokesman. You know we have to give an account of every outer word we speak. And so to take on something that God did not call you to take on is very uh, silly. I was going to say stupid, but I'm going to use that word. It's, it's not wisdom. How's that? To try and be something you're not. And I've seen that with the prophetic. And you have to be careful when you've been damaged by the prophetic streams and you've been damaged by those things. You have to be careful that you don't get a negative, pessimistic spirit, that you don't begin to think all prophets are bad, or the prophetic is just throw it out. I, I know people that have thrown out the prophetic altogether in their life because they've seen the nonsense, because they've been damaged by it. You know, and it grieves the heart of the Father because it is a very powerful, precious gift. And so you have to be careful I'm going to get ahead of myself. I'm going to back up. You have to be careful about that because we don't want to damage people. We don't want to portray God because remember, Jesus, if you say you're a prophet, guess what? You're, you're the prophet Jesus in the earth. I'm just 
just going to be transparent for a minute because I had a prophet tell me many times, you need to start sharing your wounds. You need to start sharing some things because people need to hear it. But the thing of it is, I, I was talking with the Holy Spirit this morning, and I was like, you know what? We just going to strip every label in this house. We just going to strip every label, every title. We're going we're to strip it. Okay? Somebody's like, what are you talking about? I know what I'm talking about. There's a ship coming in here. Yeah. Because there's some old things. Okay? And it's not that the old things are wrong. Okay? It's not that the old things um, are bad. All right? But when you're talking about the river of God and you're talking about the flow of God, there's something God is releasing in the earth today that we have never seen before. We keep hearing it. I heard Mark say it several times. I know it. I may not know exactly what it is, but I know it's going to line up with truth. And I know it's going to bring the glory of God. And it's going to produce supernatural miracles and healings. Signs and wonders. We say many times, we want to, we want to see what the general saw. There's more. Yes. There's so much more to see. There's so much more to experience than that. That was wonderful. But what about the glory of the latter, the former and the latter? What about something greater? What is it? I recently had a dream. Another dream, we're talking about the prophetic, so I'm just stealing my dreams here. But I recently had another dream where I was just surrounded by young people. Man, young people. Teens, 20s, 30s, the generation that people just say, whatever, you know, they don't know God. I'm telling you, these young people were powerful. They were prophesying. They were, they were, I mean, just worshiping God and just I was just surrounded by them, and, and God was just speaking to me about it. I was just watching the movement of God in this generation, and it was glorious. And I'm telling you, that's the image. We're going to see a manifestation of the power of God, but we cannot take the old models of tradition or religion. You hear me? And you can sit out there and say, well, I don't have none of that. You're deceiving yourself, right? We were all steeped in it, let's tell the truth, right? But I'm talking about a river and a movement of God. That doesn't mean I throw, see, sometimes when you say that, people get scared. Because they think you're not talking about being holy. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about allowing a movement of Holy Spirit to come through your life that will impact nations. That will change regions. Amen? Amen? That's what I'm talking about. And if I have to do things that are uncomfortable for me to see God move in such a way, I'm going to have to be uncomfortable. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, some people think when people get behind the pulpit that that must just be easy. I've got news for you. It is not easy, and by no means, when you really love Jesus. When you really love him, it's very serious to get up and release some things to the body of Christ. Amen. So let's let God strip up strip, strip us of some things. And I've talked to the Lord about some of these things, and he, He's speaking to me so clear, and I'm hearing it. And I thank Him that He's speaking. I don't ever want my ear to be dull of hearing. I'm still talking about the prophetic. If your ear is dull of hearing and you're having trouble hearing God, because he said it, she hears voice, there's probably an area of repentance that needs to happen. Okay? There's probably something that needs to be done on your end, because God is always speaking. <laughs> he can speak to me with a billboard driving down the road. He speaks to me through my children. Uh -huh. you, you say, I'm not hearing God speak? You sit down look at your kids. They'll talk to you a whole lot. Oh, it's the truth, though. There are seeds. God is always speaking. But do we have ears to hear? Is our ear open 
to what God is saying to us are resistant because it's uncomfortable to change. Change is not comfortable for most human beings, is it? We're creatures of habit. I was teaching on thoughts of the mind, and God was speaking to me, and he was telling me, we think the same thoughts every day. According to studies, 80% of our thoughts are the same every day. Where is the creative power of God working? Amen. That's a high percent right there. So we need to we need we need God we need to hear God. And so it means to prophecy means to speak forth the minding counsel of God. Prophecy is the very voice of Jesus speaking through the church by the Spirit of God. It's an anointed utterance. That's why when they came for Sunday and they released three little things. I remember Stacy released three words or four words, and the fire hit. Man, it just boom, it fell. And it was a, such a simple message that came forth out of her. But she was prophesying. She was releasing the word of the Lord that was put in her belly for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't some great big, thus saith the Lord, blah, 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 big old huge revelation, was it? No, it wasn't. It was simplicity. When Kenneth came up and he gave two words that went with my message that he didn't know, what was that? Inspired utterance of God. He was prophesying. Zach got up. He'd never done that before. Man, he was anointed, wasn't he? I was like, who is he? <laughs> I ain't never seen that boy do that before. You know? And I'm, and I'm not being, I'm just being honest. Because I couldn't, he, I didn't listen to him out of a voice of familiarity. No, the Spirit of the Lord was on him. So you know what I was doing? Paying attention. Yeah. Here you go, boy. Take the mic. The Spirit of the Lord was on him. So what do we do? With prophecy, we learn to yield to the anointing. you got to yield to him. Okay? You've got to yield to him and yield to the God and other people. We teach about not knowing each other after the flesh in here. Because we get untroubled when we do that. Okay. So God's helping us. Prophecy is the voice of Jesus. And so, 1 Corinthians 13, I'm just going to keep on walking through here. That is so good. It's actually 14. It says, But one who prophesies speaks to men for edification, exhortation, and consolation. And so, what, are we, what is prophecy? We are edifying. What does that mean? That you're building up. You're strengthening the body. You're making it more effective. To exhort in prophecy means to stimulate, to encourage, to admonish. <laughs> Amen? And the third thing is uh, consolation, which means to comfort, to cheer someone up. That's beautiful, isn't it? Why? When he says, don't despise prophecy. He said, don't despise it. See, what it does is it overcomes the enemy's attacks of discouragement and condemnation in the body. People already know that they're sinning, right? I'm talking about the, the, the gift of prophecy right now. But when, when, the, when the gift of prophecy is released, it turns people to Christ. And it, it, it releases a word to them of instruction. I don't know anybody personally. There's probably some. But when, when the love of Christ is released into someone's life and they feel the love of Christ, Man, it melts the heart of the people, doesn't it? I love my sister, and she got such a word yesterday, and I saw the love of Christ just envelop her. Man, I just watched just the love of Christ. just It was like he was just melting her. And what was that? Man, she was built up. She was There was an exhorting there. There was an edification that has changed her life <laughs> forever. Amen? You know why it's changed her? Because she received it. She wasn't resistant to the voice of Jesus, see? And it, and it also talked about change, and she received it. And so prophets prepare the way for the Lord to return. Amen? And they make uh, ready a people prepared for the Lord. And so uh, the prophetic, uh, imparting of the prophetic prophecy comes from God, and it operates differently in various people. That's why I was talking about uh, the seer, the, the seer realm. And so some of the prophets like Ezekiel, you could call him that. He was a prophet, but he was a seer. The visions that he wrote about and all of those things he saw. And so a prophet who receives a particular type of prophetic revelation 
uh, or impartation, a seer prophet. There, to, the word seer means uh, to gaze, right? And so there's times where uh, the seer anointing will come, and it's like all of a sudden you're just like, whoa, you're somewhere. Where are you at? There's a prophetic uh, vision taking place. The, 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 an image comes to you, a picture. God allows you to see. It's like God lifts the veil of the unseen realm. All right? He can do that with seers. And, and I wish there was, um, and I'm gonna, there's some people I'm thinking about right now that really need this because a lot of times people will not submit their visions and the things they see for accountability. And that's where you get off, and I'm going to get ahead of myself. So to, it means to see, it means to gaze, to look upon, and to perceive. And so it also means a beholder in a vision. And so a, a Navi prophet is inspired by hearing and speaking. A seer is mostly visual. And so the ones that it bubbles up forth and it comes out of them, Okay, they can hear very well. It's very, very much hearing. In my early years, um, years back, I always got the word, you're a seer, you're a seer, you're a seer, all the time through prophets. And, and I was seeing all the time. It was just constant uh, visions and discerning of spirits is mixed, uh, mixed with that. And I could see things. And I had a lot of uh, open visions, dreamed every night. And it was very strong uh, on my life then. And so, um, seeing, and so seers, not, sometimes when you get an image, you have to stop in a prophetic when you get the vision, and you have to pray a little bit in the Holy Spirit, because you really are not quite sure what God is showing you at times, okay? And so you're praying in the Spirit, you see a vision, this happens a lot, you know, sometimes you'll I'll see something over someone's head, and I'll just have to begin to pray. And I'll, I'll have to uh, listen. Okay, I'm listening. I'm like, Lord, what do you want me to do with that? Because sometimes you don't want you to say nothing. Right? What? Remember, it's the prophecy. It's the testimony of Jesus. And so you yield and you say, Jesus, what do I do with that? Yeah. Because many times he doesn't even want you to say anything. I'm talking about it's his word, not yours, right? And so with the seer, many times you'll see things, and especially with your intercession and you're in, um, as all, you know, prophet, prophetic should come through the counsel of the Lord. It should come through intercession. Jeremiah 23, you want the fear of the Lord with prophetic? Read the chapter. Jeremiah 23, read that chapter, okay? And that will cause you to want to be in the counsel of the Lord because the counsel of the Lord, there's a, there's a fear of God in there. It talks about prophets going where God did not send them. Prophets releasing dreams out of their own counsel. Prophet having their own imaginations and visions. The whole chapter is a hard chapter, but it needs to be read. If you, you have a prophetic gift, you want to prophesy, you need to read that. Because it's very important to understand God's word doesn't change because it's old covenant. It doesn't change. Amen. He still believes that way. He didn't change into the New Testament. Okay, he didn't, he didn't change his, his character, his nature, or his thoughts concerning prophecy because our sons and daughters shall prophesy. He did it. So that's where deception comes in. And so you get the vision, you see the vision as a seer, and you begin to wait on the Lord. Now remember, Nabi prophet, it's just going to bubble up. There's no waiting. I've heard Mark say, look, I've done said it. I already did. It came out of my mouth before I could even think about it. It just came up out of there. He didn't have time to stop and ask Jesus because that's his anointing. Right? He, he, it just comes out of him that way. So you don't try and mimic or copycat other prophets. You don't try and mimic or copycat the way other people prophesy. Or, you know, you don't, and don't look at yourself in the mirror and, or by looking at someone else. You have to look through the word. You're supposed to look in the Word to find out who you are. Amen? It's in there. And so you see the vision, and all of a sudden, you may get one or two words. Teresa operates a lot like that. We work prophetic teams, and we have a lot of in here that just bubbles up. You know, they just hear things. They get a, Vicki uses the Word. 
Her prophecies start out with scripture. She's a walking word. She memorizes the scripture and the address. She did it, you know, for I don't know how long, but she's got the word in there. And so she'll begin to come forth and her prophetic gift comes out by scripture and then she, she'll go into wherever God takes her. Teresa is seeing. She'll see a vision. She'll whisper, I saw this. What is this, you know? Why? Because she, she wants to make sure she's seeing right. That's, that's so powerful that they're accountable with the gifts. Amen? And so there's safety in that. And so then, then she'll pray a little bit, and then she gets a instruction, or she begins to get more to go with it. Carrie does both. Carrie, her gift comes out through seeing and, and uh, coming up out of her. You say, why are you sharing all that? Because I want you to understand something here, that, that we are uniquely made. The Father knows how to speak to us. And so and the prophets in the Old Testament and New, they all were different. There was different ways in which they communicated to God's people, but it was effective. Why? Because it was a testimony of Jesus. It was Christ being released through their lips, right? Speaking to God. So there's many ways. We see prophetic art. We see prophetic writing. I write better than I speak. I'm just here to tell you. God will give me something prophetically in writing. And then I'll go back and read it, and I, I try and articulate it, and I can't even say it like that. And so what is that? There's a strength in that area of the prophetic, but I can still give a word a different way, right? I'm not limiting God, so you don't limit God just to the way he uses you all the time. I remember when I was old, he, dreamed, he spoke to me. I have journals and stacks of dreams, prophetic dreams that he gave me. I still keep them, you know, and he still gives them to me. But I'm telling you, that, and, and there was a season in my life, that seemed to be the only way that he could speak to me. I don't know if it's because I was so busy through the day or what. I don't get it. It doesn't, but see, this is it. I don't have to get it. He's speaking. Thank God he's speaking. And so he would, I have stacks of, of dream journals in my closet, bags of them. And it, and, it, and it just unfolded. It just spoke to me. And he showed me things. And he talked to me about people and stuff and things. And, and all that was going on. And, and then there came a season where all of a sudden he's like, you're going to start, stuff's going to start bubbling up out of you. And I was like, I don't like that. I don't want to have it. I don't want it to bubble up out of there. Why? Because I had to face a face of fear. Let's tell the truth, right? You know, that was comfortable saying, here you go. I wrote this dream out for you. This is what God is saying. Here you go. Take this dream. I worked with leaders, and, and I was just, I would just have, to, I would give them all the dreams, everything that was going on in the house. God would say, release the dream, release, release. Give them, tell them what's happening. You know, paraphrasing. So I would do that, and, and that's what was my. I was a watchman, but it was through dreams. It was through dreams and visions. Then all of a sudden, He began to change that. Because, see, God wants to know, do you really trust him? Do you really trust him? Are you really a bond servant? Because you can master a skill in a certain area. And if you're not careful, you can be skilled in that way of functioning. And God wants to develop you in another area. But people don't want to give up that ground. This is the way it's always been. See, we get stubborn and fixed. In our own way of thinking, don't we? We get stubborn and fixed. Well, this is how God did it. That's how these uh, movements become monuments. Hello? That's how the river stops flowing. When we become fixed in a way, God uses me this way. This is the way I am. This is how it works. This is this, is this. No. Let's let the river flow. So when God began to dry up the dreams a little bit, I thought, man, did I do something wrong? Did, am I sinning in an area? He's not speaking to me like that anymore. He's like, uh-uh, okay, I, I give you the pictures, I give you images, I walked it out for you, now you're going to search me out. Now you're going to trust me at a whole nother level right now. And so I had to get out of my comfort zone. You know, there was a season that I would not get up and speak in a church. George did, a, just pushed, George did all the teaching. 
And all I did uh, was sit back and intercede and have dreams and visions and, and, and release things in private. And God began to say, ah, uh, things are changing. Things are changing. Are you going, are you going to let me move through you or not? Because see, the, the, this is the danger of getting stuck and complacent, even in the prophetic, okay? Even in the prophetic, because we put a ceiling on God if we're not careful. And you see that, okay? You can see that in denominations. Tell the truth. Yeah. Where there is a ceiling, there is a cap on how God can move and how God can flow. They cap God off because in that way that they have been flowing and functioning, God uses that. It's true. God uses it to a certain level and a degree. Same with the prophetic. If I would have capped God off, in the area of my life, and I would not venture outside of my comfort, my comfort zone, and I would not step out and let and, and cultivate my ear to hear God different in a different way. He's still speaking. I would have capped him off, and I would have not been able to move into something new. Now it says, and we quote it in church: "He changes us from glory to glory." Does he really? Do we let him? Are we renewed? Do we do, we do Are things changing, or am I stuck? Am I stuck in a form? See, that's where the, that's where those monuments come instead of movements. That's where people get stuck in this form because of fear, because of fear of the unknown. Many people set on their calling, they set on their gifts because of fear, fear of rejection. Well, in the prophetic, you're going to get rejected. I'm just here to tell you. It's going to happen. Because they rejected Jesus, you will get rejected. So God spoke to you in past seasons a certain way. He's telling you today, have an ear to hear me today. Have an ear to hear me today. He is a what? Good father. Everything he has for us is good. He doesn't have anything bad for us. We can trust him to shift and to change. Amen? We can trust him to do that. So he's changing things. Yeah. Bless the Lord. Because we don't want to get critical either. Because you know you can be critical with the prophetic too. We talked about that. Get healed if you've been abused, okay? So God also, you know, we're talking about, about prophets. We're talking about seeing. Thank you, Lord. He's helping us. So again, the prophet, when it bubbles up, the anointing tends to be audible. It's verbal with the Nava prophet. It comes forth. I know where I was going. I'm going to just come back to me. I've been in um, different places, not probably as many as some of y'all, but I've been in different places where the Lord showed me, and I went into these, these um, arenas, these prophetic arenas. Let's call them that. And that's what it was. Prophetic arenas where God was just doing things and, and God was moving. But the problem with it was I went home that night and uh, it was a very well-known arena and I went home that night and I had a dream. And in the dream, there was a, a circus going on in this place and I sat down and I, and, every, and, someone, and I was eating popcorn and I was watching the show. And as I was watching the show, there was people jumping through hoops there was all kinds of acrobats and things going on, and all of these things were going on. And in, and I woke up and I was like, "What is this, Lord? You know, because a lot of good things are happening in there. You know, but what He was telling me is that when man begins to make a make a show of things, so you can make a show of gifts, okay? You can make a show of it. You can make the prophetic more about um, more about entertainment than the purity and power of Jesus. Okay? You can 
you can label a prophetic meeting, you know, and more people will come to that than a prayer meeting. So just tell the truth. Or you might have a meeting to teach something or, or how it goes. But everybody wants a word, right? And everybody wants, not everybody, to give you a word. Many want a word. Many want to be entertained. There's nothing wrong with wanting a word. I need words. But, it, the, but the gift can't come before my passion and my love for Jesus. You see, my gift can't come before what the purpose, I, I've got to keep it in right alignment with the king. We sang about the king. The king has to be priority in my gifts. It has to be about Jesus. It can't be about how talented I am or how how good it looks or sounds and all of those things. I'm telling you, God is cleaning up the prophetic today. He's cleaning it up because it needs cleaned up. And so we need the eyes of our understanding enlightened about what the enemy is trying to do. Ephesians 4.1 talks about that. There's a prayer uh, in that Ephesians that talks about opening the eyes of my understanding, getting back to what it's really about. Man, getting back, Lord, open my eyes that I can see the way you see concerning the prophetic, concerning the gift that you've given me and the motives behind it. And so whenever, um, getting back to the seer, whenever the seer happens and, and the visual is open, it's like you go to another realm and you begin to see. And so even though in the natural going into that church, everything looked good, God was showing, showing me how he saw it. He was showing me something. He never let me address it, but nonetheless, he let me see it. Okay? And so sometimes, what is it for? Intercession? To pray? To pray for those people? And see, you can produce fruit at a level where you're at right now. We're fruit-producing tree in here. We know that. But there's more than what we're producing available to us. And so we can stay stuck producing a certain, uh, a certain way, a certain design, a certain kind of fruit. Okay, we can we can stay in this place where we're just continuing uh, to produce that. That's great, but I want the glory. Amen. See, I want more than what I produced last season. Amen. I want more than that. And as soon as I get comfortable, this is what happens. Even with that movement, what I see, people become prideful, okay? They become prideful thinking they have all the answers. They become prideful thinking that their way is the best way to get puffed up because you are seeing fruit. You are seeing things happen. But where's the glory? Where are the miracles? Where are, like Mark talked about, where are divine revelations? Can we say, like Paul said, whether in the body, out of the body, I don't yeah. know, but I went somewhere. Yeah. And God showed me things I can't even tell you and you aren't able to hear it. Where's that at? Where are the angels showing up and having conversations with you? Where are they? I know they're here now. I mean, they're here. How come our eyes are not open to see? There was nothing for the Acts Church to see angels and to have conversations and to discern that it was God. Yeah. Yeah. See, we get some visitations today in the church, but we're not discerning what spirit it is been deceived myself. So you see what I'm saying? I'm talking about the glory. I'm not talking about having a, a little bit. I'm talking about crossing over into this season and time in the earth and getting God's heart for whatever it is he has. Not being a model. Okay? I want the model of Jesus. People say that. Well, this model and that model and this model. I want the model of Christ. So thank you, Father, that you're helping us to have spiritual vision. Spiritual vision. In Jesus' name, Proverbs 29, 18, the prophetic. You know what it brings? It brings a vision. 
says where there is no vision or you could say revelation, prophetic revelation, the people are unrestrained, but happy is he who keeps the law. So in another version it says the people cast off restraint. Why do we need the prophetic? Because people cast off restraint when they don't get revelation. <laughs> it's true. And I'm looking at prodigals today, and the Lord was speaking to me about that. And some prodigals that I know personally, they have no revelation. And you know what? They're in rebellion. They have not had a prophetic revelation. They think that Jesus has not been revealed to them yet. And so where are they at? In rebellion, wandering about. And so without prophecy, um, a vision of divine revelation for your life, people will run wild. Casting off restraint means people run wild. It means they fall away. They become complacent because they have no guidance. One of the scriptures talked about in Hosea 12, 13, by a prophet the Lord brought Israel from Egypt, and by a prophet he was kept. We need the prophetic yeah. to keep us out of Egypt, yeah. right? To keep us out of bondage, we need uh, the prophetic to guide our life. i got to have it. And so, if you think about it, they become complacent because they have no guidance. Without no guidance from Jesus, no law, no word, no God of instruction. So that's what people need. That's why the prophetic is so important. Thank you, Father. He's doing it even now. So some of the, I'm going to shift a little bit, discerning of spirits and the prophetic. So we have to discern. Mark talked about judging the word. Oh, yeah. And you need to do it. There's some, there's some things. Three little things to go here. Areas, not little. <laughs> to keep the prophetic pure. Okay? So we talked a little bit about the seeing part. And how you see, how you pause, you pray in the spirit, you listen to see if you're to release it. God, what does this mean? He will take you to a scripture. He will, some, uh, he will sometimes give you a word. Many times on Sunday we'll have guests come and I will say to the Lord, do you have a word for them? I'm talking to him while I'm standing here just waiting and I pray and I listen. Do you have something for them, Lord? What am I doing? I'm giving place for the prophetic to flow. You can do that too. Not just up here in the pulpit. And so I'm waiting and I'm watching and I'm listening and all of a sudden I'll get a word or I'll get something. And if I don't give place to Holy Spirit and I don't release it, it's not coming forth. It's subject to my obedience. See, you've got a partner with God. We talk about that. You've got a partner with Him. Unless He gives it to somebody else in the house, if I don't release it, it is not coming out. And guess what? They go home without the word of the Lord. But most of the time, we don't give Him place to move. And another thing, too, we do not always expect him to move, do we? Unbelieving believers, when we gather, do we give him place to heal? You hear me say, what, my kingdom come, my will be done, Lord, release your kingdom in here, whatever they need. I don't know what they need, but you know what they need. And so, you know, we're giving place for the spirit of God to move, prophecy. We're giving place for him to speak. We're giving place to him yeah. to heal. We're giving place to him to do a miracle. But if we come together and we're not expecting anything, nothing is going to happen. God always partners with man. Invaluable, imperfect us. Yes, he does. So we got to get out of ourselves. So I want the prophetic to be pure coming out of me. All right? You need to prophesy with accountability. We teach that in here. We don't. We don't let. We. I'm not. We don't control people. People do what they desire to do. We tell them. We. We ask them. Don't do sidewalk prophecies. Don't pull people aside and give them a word without accountability. Don't do that. Now they're going to do it anyway. Some of them, right? But they're not supposed to. So when they stand before God and they gave a wrong word out of zeal, or they give a wrong word out of pride, 
or something or, or out of season. You know you can give a word out of season? You can give a word out of season to somebody and mess their life up. Just because God shows it to you doesn't mean you've got to say it. See, there's accountability. That's why spiritual leadership is so valuable. You know, or, or a friend, you know, that uh, can, can somebody that you can uh, call, you know, bounce revelations off of. When I wrote the Bloodline book, I sent it to Mark. Will you read it? It wasn't just for him to read it. I wanted him, I wanted to make sure that there was some things in that things in there were accurate, that I wasn't off someplace. And so when you start keeping uh, and holding back and not wanting anybody to judge your prophecies, there's something wrong in you. Yeah. There's some immaturity and some pride in there that needs to be dealt with. And you're accountable for that word because I gave you instruction. I gave you instruction. And I'm just saying, so, you know, you're instruct God works through authority, whether we like it or not. And if you don't like authority, there's another issue there. And so do not prophesy under pressure uh, or demand. That means that um, pressure or demand, you don't prophesy at a place like that. Sometimes people will know you have a prophetic gift. Okay? I'm sorry I keep using you, Mark, but, like, even when I send Mark a text, I'm not pulling on him to prophesy to me. If I send a apostle a text in Chicago, I'm not pulling on him because I need a word. I'm just trying to be a friend. But see, people will use you for your gifts. Uh huh. They will thank you for it. They will use you for it because they don't want to seek God for themselves. There's nothing wrong with going to a friend and saying, can you pray with me over this? I need some prayer. And if they get a word for you, you pray together, right? You're not just pulling on them to do all the praying, but no, I'm going to seek out a matter with you. Yeah. I may send a text and say, pray with me on this, and I leave it because I'm praying on it. If you hear something, I'm praying too. Let's, let's find out what God is doing, okay? Something like that is appropriate. But don't allow people just to pull on you all the time because you, you get idolatry in your own heart. You deceive yourself thinking you're something when you're nothing. Hello? Amen. It's the truth. That's just word right there. Don't think too highly of yourself than you ought to think. And you will be tested with your gifts. You will be tested with your gifts. You know, we have a strong anointing in here to cast out devils. We know that. It's a cleansing anointing. It comes back and goes someplace and it just happens. Just from teaching. I'm not even trying to cast anything out. <laughs> but I don't let people make me cast out demons. And they'll, they'll try and make me do that. Jesus said what? He only cast out demons by the finger of God. Well, you should only prophesy by the finger of God. When instructed or when God, uh, when Jesus releases that, don't let people pull on you because I'm telling you, pride will come. Do not covet another prophet or do copycat prophecies. And Jeremiah talks about that, that they, they took other uh, prophecies and made and prophesied someone else's word. I'm not saying that you don't uh, share or release words. I'm saying that you're, you go and find something and because it was anointing on it, you know, you're going to release it as your own. Well, you better watch that. That's, that's not pure. Do not prophesy to prove you can. Because the enemy will challenge you in that. He will challenge you to tell me, okay? But all of that is coming out of self, right? So you don't prophesy to prove you can do it. And that's with any gift. Do not take money or give money to buy a word. Sowing is the way you do it, but you don't manipulate people with money to get a word. Do you know today in the church they still have prophetic money lines? Today. $25 word, $50 word, $100 word. What kind of word do you want? It's true. You all probably, you never see it here, you never ever will. Lord burned the house down this so. But I'm telling you the truth. It happens today where people do it for money. The mammon 
is wicked. And so it is divination. If you buy in a word, just you might as well just go call the psychic, psychic hotline and get a word that way. Because it's the truth right there. It's the truth. You're not going to buy words. Don't let someone manipulate you with anything to get a word from you. Because it'll happen. Thank you, Father. Always operating in the fear of God and releasing the word of the Lord. So you're going to operate in the fear of God, knowing that even as you're releasing the word, that angels are recording it. And you may hear it again someday when you stand before the Father. Oh, really? Yeah. That's why I always say, Father, whatever word was you, let them receive it. Any words that was coming out that I... You know, in ignorance or something that I said that was not to erase it from their mind, Lord. Cover it in the blood of Jesus. Yes. See, the blood washes. You need to do that often with your words. You need to say, Father, cover my words in the blood of Christ. Don't let them return back to me in Jesus' name. And so what's God saying today? The prophetic, purity of the prophet, purity of the prophetic gift. And so when is not to make you afraid to prophesy. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about understanding that there's a higher accountability when you release words and you, you say that God showed me or God said. Or, did he really say it? He says in Jeremiah, they said, I said it and I didn't say it. They're putting my name on stuff that I never said that I never released. It's true, isn't it? You should get a witness in your spirit of Holy Spirit when it's time to speak. And this witness will be different for everyone. I know when the anointing comes back, there's a certain way that, that the Holy Spirit moves on my physical body. There's a certain presence that comes. I know Him. And I know when He's there and when He comes. And everybody's different. Some people say, I feel a weight in my hands or, or I just felt some, you know, I felt Him just come upon me. You know, I always feel a lip bulb in my belly. That's how I feel, and I know when he's there. And there's different ways that that feels, okay? And there's different ways when you, I'm talking a little bit about discerning of spirits, but when the Holy Spirit is present, when you cultivate your fear to hear him, and you have a desire to grow in the gifts of the prophetic, ask him, reveal to me your presence, Lord. Reveal to me when you're speaking. Don't just think you know. Reveal to me. See, he wants to reveal his word to you to release to people. People need it. They're without restraint, aren't they? I know some people that right now there is no restraint because they have no prophetic revelation. They're wandering aimlessly about in rebellion because of that. And why? Because the church needs to be prophesying church needs to be releasing the word of the Lord into people's lives. Help us, Father, the true word. It will shift and change some things. Yeah. And so we have to discern the spirit behind things, even in the prophetic. Discerning of spirits is a gift of revelation by the Holy Spirit. This function or gift is the ability to recognize and distinguish the spirits of a thing or the spirit itself. Right? And so we have to recognize even what's behind our words. Is your heart circumcised in love when you're prophesying? Do you release a word uh, in pride? Do you release a word because you can? Do you release a word because you want people to accept you? I want you to think about it. Yeah. There's so much rejection and fear of rejection in the body of Christ. It is ridiculous. We know because we go all over the, all over dealing with these root issues in people so the gifts of God can come forth pure. Because we can do that sometimes. Why do you even want to help people? It should always be because you love Jesus first and you love people. <laughs> That's it. You love Christ, you love the body. You can't, you know, I don't want to hear a prophetic word from anybody that hates people. Anybody that's bitter, has unforgiveness, or that's offended, just be quiet. I don't want to hear your word. It's the truth. Why? Because I want it to come out pure. I want the spirit of the thing to come out of them 
and impact my life. There's been times where I've said, I don't want to hear, I, I just, uh-uh, and I've done that. I put my hands, I don't want to. I remember uh, years back, a man asked, he wanted to pray for me, and he was ministering and praying for people and just, you know, prophesying and everything, but the Lord showed me what spirit he had, and he was calling people and pointing to people, and, you know, pulling them out, and I, I had my head down, and I said, Lord, don't let him call me, don't let him call me, don't let him call me. I was like, don't let him call me. The Lord said, you right there in the white, step out. And I was like, I had a choice, but I discerned the spirit. You know what I said? Uh uh, no thank you. And it was like everybody just looked at me like, what kind of rebellion does this woman have? Because they didn't understand. But I said, no, no, I was very polite, but I said, no, no thank you. Why? Because I didn't want to receive that. I did not want to receive what was on that man. I did not want to go home. The Lord said, you let him pray for you, you let him minister to you. You will go home with what he has. Spirit, I'm telling you, when you release things, you all need to understand. When you're releasing things, the spirit behind it is what is impacting the people. It's the spirit behind it. Is it the love of Christ? Is it Jesus? Or is it religion or tradition? Or um, is it pride? Is it is it vain glory? There was so much vainglory going on in that tent meeting. It was just ridiculous. And I could see it all. Why? Because like, God let me see it. He lifted the veil. He let me see it. But I had a responsibility. Do I go to please man? Because there's been times I failed that test. I'm here to tell you. We'll talk about that tomorrow. There's been times I failed that. But this time I've asked it. And I said, you know, thank you. And, and I was scorned. I mean, the man was like offended. How dare you not receive from me? Well, you know what? I don't want what you have, so discern the spirit behind it. The function, this gift will function well with the seer prophetic gift. Also the healing gift, 2 Corinthians 10, 4. says, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. What is a prophetic do? It goes forth. It was doing it last night. It was tearing down fortresses. <laughs> Whereat, in the spirit realm, it was making a way for the Lord to move. <laughs> in the spirit realm. Isn't it exciting? Don't it just excite you? It should. You should be stirred up in here. Why? Because you have that ability because you carry the spirit of Christ. You've got to get in his counsel. What is that? Man, I'm getting in my prayer closet. You know, I'm getting in, in, uh, in intimacy with Jesus. I want to hear what he's saying. You know, someone that's in rebellion, get in your prayer closet. Cultivate. Get in here. That's what I've been doing. There's some things I need to speak to, but I don't want to speak to it until it's time. Amen. I mean, my flesh wants to speak to it right now, Amen. but I haven't got instruction yet. I haven't got the instruction of the Lord yet. So I'm not going to go ahead of time. Still talking about the prophetic. I'm not going to go ahead of time and go in there and deal with something until I get the counsel of God on it. Because it's pretty serious stuff. That's how we should be when we want to handle God's word. He's holy, y'all. He's holy. And so we must desire, desire um, discern correctly by the Spirit of God. What is demonic, angelic, holy, or the flesh, the discerning of spirits? And see, and when God is grooming you in the prophetic and you're learning, you're cultivating, that means I'm, I'm learning, I'm tending to the voice of the Lord. Lord, is that you? And many times when you're, when you're beginning, He will give you confirmation, right? He's going to give you confirmation. He's going to begin to um, release instruction to you, but He will confirm it to you. Yeah, he knows you don't want to miss it, okay? Let him confirm the word. Do you know when he releases something to you for somebody and you begin to, you're cultivating, you're hearing something, you know you got to be accountable to somebody for it, all right? But also, you don't have to rush and release it until you're sure. Sometimes we get ahead. We want to hurry up and release it. That's why I tell the team, pray in the spirit. Just pray and wait, pray and wait, pray and wait. You know, don't just jump and just start just doing stuff. Because then you're getting into a formula again. 
You're getting into a form, okay? We don't want a form, we want the river, Amen. right? And so we got to discern. Discernment can become active as the Holy Spirit wills at any time in a vision, in an impression, a conversation, in prayer, or a dream language, okay? I remember when God, um, and I'm, I'm almost there, y'all, just hold with me. I remember when um, I was going into, on one trip to the Navajo Nation. This is a good example of this. Talking about discerning with the prophetic. The seeing gift was working. Okay, I was seeing. I had a I had a Native American man show up in my bedroom. Uh, I saw he it was like if he peeked behind the veil, or through a veil, I should say, and I saw him in the spirit realm looking at me as I was laying there sleeping in my bed. And I still remember what he looks like. I haven't met him yet. Maybe I will, maybe I won't, but I got an image in my mind. So I saw him looking. Now, he looked very nice. He looked like he was friendly. He didn't have any expression. Just a blank look looking. And I was getting ready to go on a trip out, you know, to the, the Navajo Nation. And so, God is so awesome. Before that happened, though, there was a, another presence that came in my room. And the other presence that came brought a cold, dark feeling in my bedroom. It was like a black cloud that came in my bedroom. And I was seeing it in the spirit, and then the black cloud disappeared, and then there's this nice, friendly-looking Navajo man, or Native American man, peering at me. And so I say all that to say, God was warning me, okay? And I discerned the presence the spirit behind the man, when I saw him, if I wouldn't have had discerning of spirits operating, I could have thought, well, I wonder who he is, you know, or I could have engaged in the vision. You know, you can do that. I could have engaged in that experience too long. I could have, who knows, I don't know what that happened because I didn't do it. Because I discerned the spirit of it and I sh shut it down and I was like the blood of Jesus and so I began to use what spiritual warfare weapons and I came against it by the blood and the authority of Jesus because I knew it was evil more than likely it probably was a medicine man or something and so you know when you, you say that that's discerning of spirits operating from, with the seer prophetic all of that is mixed together I don't believe you can prophesy after without discerning of it's myself. That's my opinion. I believe they work together. And so because you need, you, you've got to discern. You've got to discern because prophetic is, is a gift of what? The Spirit of God going through. And so that's just a good example of that in operation. Also, it discerns the atmosphere. Um, it can discern the atmosphere, encounters, prophetic messages, even the source or origin of a thing is revealed to you by the Spirit. You notice how even um, even last night when Mark was releasing, he was talking about the atmosphere. <laughs> he was releasing words, but there was an atmospheric pressure or uh, resistance that probably most people don't even know they carry it or it's there because you can get familiar with the wrong atmosphere. You know that, right? So when the prophetic comes, the prophetic can discern the atmosphere through discerning of spirits and speak into the atmosphere, command the atmosphere to release or to go. He mentioned our statement up there, Jeremiah 110, because that's what we do. And it can, it can, what, break open an atmosphere. But the person that's getting prophetic ministry don't even know they're wearing it. They don't even know what's on them. You see how powerful this gift is? And God gave it to his church. Praise the Lord. He gave it to his church. Amen. Yeah. And so prophets have the ability even coming into regions. You know, and I really believe that the cleansing ministry is the work of the prophet. I already know it. We've gotten a lot of words about that. And it comes into to regions. And it, and it, what does it do? It busts up. That's just an example. That's not, it's not being tried. I'm just telling you how it works. It comes in, it breaks up ground. Tears up the rocks that nobody can see. Right? 
it's all by, by Jesus, plows the ground, breaks it open, gets rid of the rocks, gets rid of whatever is resistant in the people's hearts, right? Does all that. But not just that, what else? It plants. It doesn't just uproot, now it's, it's planting. It doesn't just destroy things, now it's building something. What is it building? The seed of God that I prophesied or imparted into the person. Mark was building. He's a builder. Hello? He was building some things in the spirit. He was tearing down some things. The prophet will do that. But not just that. He's impregnating, imparting, putting seed in there. If we will take it. If you will receive the seed. You see, we're in an acceleration accelerated season in the body of Christ. <laughs> we don't have to wait 20 years. Amen. When I sit and watch the children use technology, little Jacob that walks around here, I watched him on an iPhone. Two years old. Gotta say something. He's watching a video Emails pop up. His little thumbs can barely reach the screen. He's flicking emails out of the way. Flicking them out of the way. The phone goes to turn off, and, it, and it's because it was low on battery, and it had three little areas you could touch. The boy knew how to close it out. Two years old. You talk about not accelerating things. See, we, I, I know God is God. He's sovereign. You heard it last night. He's saying something to us. You talk about training of a child. These kids, this generation, I had another group a year ago that the babies were going to usher in Jesus. I'm telling you, there was, there was different levels of children and there were some babies. And God spoke to me about each, each age of child. And when it got to the infant, he said, these will be those. Man, I felt the power of God is so strong that's going to usher in Jesus. I don't know when that is, but he was talking to me about acceleration. He was talking about, about a full manifestation, what he wanted to do with, with this younger generation. You know, they can hold much. They can hold much more than we can hold in that age. That's not by accident, is it? No, it's not. So... We're talking about the prophetic. God is moving. And so don't hesitate. I loved it that uh, Larry's beginning to step out. He came up and he felt the scripture burning in him. He read, he read it. Bless the Lord. What is that? That's the beginning. <laughs> That's the beginning of being obedient. Do you know you will be tested in the area of obedience? Because he'll ask you to do things that seem uh, simple or seem like well, that ain't important. Nobody's going to be that what if it's for one person? See, see, we say that just haphazardly, but God means it. What if it's for one person? It is, apparently. And what does it hurt for the rest of us to listen to some scripture? Nothing. Nothing does it hurt. It helps us. It's edifying us if we'll pay attention. So you've got to, with the prophetic, you have to get past the messenger. <laughs> And listen to the message. So many people get hung up on the messenger. And I'm telling you, and God's saying you got to get past that. And that's why I love diversity of the administration of the Holy Spirit. Amen? God is good. You all have anything? Any other? You don't hear anything? You have anything? Okay. And so... The office of a prophet, that's a call of God. That's a mantle from God. And the gift of prophecy from the Holy Spirit can be at any can be can operate at any time the Spirit of God wills. You can sharpen, you can develop it, you can cultivate it, and it will grow. You can grow stronger in your gift, any gift that He gives you. Okay? You need to steward it wisely, know that it's holy. Begin to appreciate the gifts he's given you. You say, well, you know, he even says to come and to prophesy. Come on. You say, I've never prophesied before. Ask the Lord to give you a word. Get intimate with Jesus. He'll put a word in you. 
if you have ears to hear him, he will do it. And in the spirit of prophecy, when he's moving, and even uh, when a prophet comes in, man, sometimes I've seen where the spirit of prophecy just hits a house, and people just, just like, you say, pump on, you said that again, but people just getting up, and they're just getting something. But you have to break out of the resistance of change. You have to break out, because a prophetic is a river. So even on this weekend, there's things God is speaking to you, and there's changes he's doing, just from listening to the teaching, listening to the preaching, worship. I'm telling you, he's doing it. He's changing some things and opening your eyes. Thank you, Father. Let me bless you, Lord. Lord, I bless you. Just thank you, Father. Just so Father, I just thank you, Lord God, even as the word was released today. Father God, I just thank you that it's ministering to the people. And Father God, even as they leave this place, the word is going to be working. Father God, I just see it. The seed is working, Father God, and I thank you that it's sealed in their heart. I thank you, Father, for uh, the river of God, the change of God that is taking place in this church, this ministry, this, this whatever this is, Father, we thank you. We just give you glory for it, Father, I ask that you would continue to be with them today. And Lord, let there be visions. I just ask, Father, even uh, for open visions just to be released in this place. Father, in Jesus' name on this week, and, and that they will come back and they will share visions. Father, even on tonight, dreams. I thank you for the prophet and continuing to flow. Father, let this place be filled with all the men from the north, south, east, and west. In the name of Jesus, Father, even let the words be released. Um, Father God, even on uh, social media, live stream, let the word of God just penetrate and pierce people's hearts. Father, because there are those that are watching that couldn't come, that wanted to come. So, Lord, we, we know that you're working. And we're, we're open to change, Father. So you have to be willing to let the river flow through. You have to be willing. So, Father, I just bless you people in Jesus' name today. Amen. Lord, I want to speak to you sometimes. Thank you, Lord. Anything burning in your belly, now?